Hallo Schüler, hallo Schülerinnen. Willkommen in der Grammatikstube. Ich bin Herr K. und das ist Samantha. Hallo Samantha. Hallo. Samantha, today we're talking about past perfect. Past perfect tense. Okay. This past perfect tense, Herr K. Yeah. It's, it's used to describe an event in the past that preceded another event in the past. But what exactly does this mean? Well, let me give you an example. We'll look at two events, okay? So, here's the first event. And you recognize that person there? Mm, I recognize one of them. Event number one, okay. So, der Papa erzählte die Geschichte. Yeah, okay. On event number two. Die Tochter schlief ein. Die Tochter schlief ein. So, we've got two events there, Sam. So, can you tell me, I've got two questions for you. First of all, did both of those events occur in the past tense? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Okay. Now, let me ask you another question. Did they occur at the same time in the past tense? No. One event occurred before the other. So the father told the story before the daughter fell asleep. Okay. So you're telling me that event one occurred before event two. Yes. Okay. That's exactly what we mean by, what we, uh, by the uh, past perfect tense. When one event precedes another, we're going to use the past perfect. Let's look at this again and see how this changes. Okay, uh, you said that event one comes before event two, so let's uh, change the sentence in event one to the past perfect since it does precede event two. Nachdem der Papa die Geschichte erzählt hatte, schlief die Tochter ein. Right. Now, event one is described with the past perfect tense. What does that mean, uh, Samantha? Uh, nachdem der Papa die Geschichte erzählt hatte. After the father tol had told the story, the daughter fell asleep. Right. After the Papa had told the story, the daughter fell asleep. So, the first one is in the past perfect tense. It precedes the second event. Okay? Okay. So when you say past perfect, we have to be careful that we don't mix it up with the perfect or present perfect, right? Right. That is a little bit confusing. One is called the just the perfect, the perfect, or present perfect. The other is the past perfect. Let's look at the difference between the two. Okay. The present perfect tense and the past perfect tense. Now, the use of the present perfect tense is just for the conversational past tense, the most common past tense form in spoken German. Here's an example, uh, Samantha. Er hat Tee getrunken. Would that be in English? He has drunk tea. He has drunk tea. Okay. So that's just the regular old past tense, spoken past tense in German. That's the present perfect tense. Now, the past perfect tense. We want to know what the use is for that. And the use is for that? Is when one event precedes another. Right. To show one event preceding the other. Exactly. So let's have an example here. Er hatte Brot gegessen. In English that is? He had eaten bread. He had eaten bread. Now, the good thing about this tense, the past perfect tense, it's exactly the same in English. In English, it tells us when something precedes another, and in German, so they're the same. So, can you tell me, out of those two sentences up there, the one on the left, the one on the right, which one precedes the other, as far as time goes? The one on the right came before the one on the left. That's right, because it's in the past perfect tense. He had eaten the bread. He has drunk the tea. So the, the past perfect tense tells us that it came earlier. We'll look at some more examples in, in a little bit. But what are the, some of the things that are similar between the two, the regular perfect tense and the past perfect? Well, they both have a helping verb and a participle at the end. Okay. And let's look at the helping verb first. See, they do both have a helping verb. They're a little bit different, but they have helping verbs. And both have a participle, as you said. What's one way you can tell what a participle is? You can notice the GE prefix for right. one. Right, right. In German, usually you have a GE prefix. Now, there are differences as well. Um, some of the differences 
on the way it looks, okay? We kind of mentioned that. Um, the helping verb. There's a difference between those hel helping verbs. In the regular perfect tense on the left, that's the helping verb is just um, the present tense form of haben, hat, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the helping verb on the right side, is that the present tense form of haben or sein? No, it's the past tense form. It's the past tense form. You see that? Hatte. So in the past perfect tense, the helping verb is always going to be in the past tense. It's either going to be hatte, which is the past tense of haben. What's the past tense of sein? Va. Va. It's either going to be hatte or va, one of those two. So the main difference is that in the present perfect, the helping verb is in the present tense, and in the past perfect, it's in the past tense. Right. Exactly right. So we could easily convert a regular perfect sentence into the past perfect, right? We could easily convert one into the other. Let's look at a perfect sentence here, okay? Here's a perfect sentence, perfect. Sie sind am Brandenburger Tor gewesen. They have been to the Brandenburg Gate. Right, and let's convert this to the past perfect. In German, that's called the Plusquam Perfect. It's very easy to convert. There's only one thing we're going to change. Any guesses? The helping verb. The helping verb. Sie waren am Brandenburger Tor gewesen. And that would be in English? They had been to the Brandenburg Gate. They had been to the Brandenburg Gate. Exactly. So only the helping verb changed. And here we use waren instead of sind. And when we say that, we're talking about something that came before something else. I noticed you used Nachtem earlier. You said, Nachtem der Papa die Geschichte erzählt hatte, schlief die Tochter ein. That's right. And let's look at that first part. Do you have a question about that? Yeah, Nachtem means after, right? It means after. Okay, let's look. The Nachtem means after. Mm -hmm. And it's a conjunction. It's very, it's very useful for the past perfect because it tells us something that came before something else. Okay, what kind of a word is nachdem? It's a conjunction. Right, a subordinating conjunction. And let me give you a clue if you remember what that means, a subordinating conjunction. It's a certain type of conjunction. And let me give you a clue. See that verb there? Mm -hmm. The verb is at the end, and we refer to these kind of conjunctions as... A verb kicker. Right, it's a verb kicker. Why do you think so? Because it kicks the verb to the end of the clause. Right, it kicks the verb to the end of the clause. So it's a dependent clause. Now, if we're going to put a dependent clause first, Sam, what do you think is going to come immediately after the dependent clause in the main clause? Okay, there's a rule, actually. When a dependent clause is first, hmm, what's the rest? The verb of the main clause will follow. The verb of the main clause will follow. Now, why is that, that the, the verb of the main clause will follow? There's a rule for main clauses is that the verb is always... In the second position. It's in the second position. So for the entire sentence, the dependent clause becomes the first element and the main clause is the second. Okay, let's see how this works. So we said that something is going to immediately follow this clause here. What is that gonna be right there? The verb of the main clause. The verb of the main clause. Let's see if indeed that happens. Schlief die Tochter ein. That's right, the verb followed. Now, is the verb in, what kind of tense is that? Schlief die Tochter ein. It's just in the past tense. It's in the past tense. It doesn't matter what kind of past tense. It could be um, the perfect or it could be the simple past, which we call imperfect. Uh, but it has to be in the regular old past tense. Okay, again, that Nachtim is very uh, often used uh, with the past perfect because it tells something that happened before something else. So that's why we use it so often. And it's a verb kicker, so we have to pay attention to that. Um, would you like to see the word order again of how the uh, 
how these uh, clauses fit together. Let's yeah, look I think at that. that'd be helpful. Let's look at that again. Okay, so there's our sentence kind of shortened a bit. Nachdem er erzählt hatte, schlief sie ein. Right, okay. Now, we're going to look at the uh, order of things here. That first bit there, the first part of the entire sentence is... The dependent clause. The dependent clause. So it comes first. Now, if it's going to be first, what's going to be second? The verb of the main clause. The verb of the main clause is going to be second, and then whatever follows, whatever comes after the rest of the main clause. In this case, the subject, and then the rest of the, the clause, okay? Now, uh, Samantha, what about if you would put the main clause first and then the dependent clause? Um, well, do you think that's going to be easy or not so easy? It should be pretty simple. It's going to be very easy. Okay. Sie schlief ein, nachdem er erzählt hatte. In this case, first is... The main clause. The main clause. And then all we have to do afterwards is put... The dependent clause. Right. So we put the dependent clause. It's the dependent clause. Of course, it has the verb at the end, but there is, uh, we don't have to change any word order within the main clause. And all of these sentences, notice what comes in between. A comma. A comma. It's very important to put a comma between clauses in German. Okay, Sam, I think the Schüler are ready to try out the past perfect tense. It's a tense used when... One event is preceding another. One event precedes another. Okay, hier ist die Aufgabe, Schüler. Aufgabe. Convert one of two clauses of each pair below to the past perfect. Then join the two sentences to create one sentence. Your completed sentence should begin with the conjunction nachdem. Be sure to remember to insert a comma between clauses. First, we'll start with an example, a Beispiel. Here's the Beispiel. Kirsten hat drei Stunden gewartet. Sie ist nach Hause gegangen. So you're going to join these two sentences and put one into the past perfect. Here's the way that should look when it's finished. Notice the comma in the middle. And the first part of the sentence starts with a nachdem. Here are the sentences you need to do for your Aufgabe.